Hi, thanks for tuning in to this One Cool Thing podcast on Canvas Discussions. So you can access discussions by finding the discussion on the left-hand sidebar of your Canvas course. So I've clicked on this already, and you'll see that, that you can have pinned discussions, current discussions, and then closed discussions. Pinned discussions are basically ones you always want to have up at the top. Say you do this a lot. Discussions would be like the current ones, and then closed for comments, you can you know, close a discussion so that kids can no longer respond. So these would be ones that would be closed. So to create a discussion, I'm going to click on the little plus discussion. Um, and you want to give your discussion a name. Uh, TED Talk discussion. Now you'll see you have the rich text editor. So this is where you can have all the prompts for your discussion. So this could be the the, maybe a, you could click on this, you could insert a video that you have, you could upload a video, you could insert a link to a, maybe an article you want them to read, you could add a picture that you want them to look at and comment on, you could insert a math equation and have them comment on it, you could embed a YouTube video or Vimeo video, um, you could record a video right now, you could record your, your video of yourself giving the prompt of the discussion. So you could talk directly to them using this. Um, from here then, uh, I'm gonna do YouTube video. So uh, you can search right here. So I'm gonna search for uh, a TED Talk. And I like this one. So how risk taking changes a teenager's brain. So I'm just gonna say embed and boom, there's my YouTube video. Now, um, you can go one step further, and this is kind of a tangent because it's another uh, one cool thing video, but you can also instead use ARC. So maybe you want to make sure that your students really are watching that video, and maybe you even want them to comment at different parts of the video. You can select ARC, and you can see I've already added it, so I'm going to say okay, um, but say I have this link so I'm going to copy that link and uh, I go to ARC so in order to use ARC you have to first add a video into ARC so you could upload your own video or you could paste a URL so here I would just paste and select add so now I'm going to have a duplicate and I'm going to say select this now like I said uh, ARC allows you to comment at any point during the video so uh, you know, it's a bit redundant given that this is a Canvas discussion, but if you wanted that, you could have that feature and then you say embed. And so now what'll pop up is a slightly different version of this. Let me kind of scroll this down. So here is the YouTube video that I, uh, I originally uploaded, but now here's that same YouTube video, but it's using ARC. And so now um, as students are watching the video, they could be adding their two cents. They could be commenting at different parts. You can go back and click on insights and be able, you'll be able to see each and every student and tell if each and every student actually watched the video. So um, this has a little bit of accountability for them as well. So however you want to, uh, you know, ask your question for discussion is, is up to you. I recommend having some guidelines for how to do a Canvas discussion. And the first time you do it, you probably should talk about it in, in person first and then have it again in the discussion. So I've created a page with my guidelines. So I can go up to pages and I can say, uh, I can find my guidelines for online discussion. I can click on that and embed it right there. Um, here's that page. I could also, and I would recommend this, maybe just copy and paste the whole thing um, and put it here. So after I ask them their question that I want them to talk about or maybe give them a couple questions, this is helpful for them. So um, giving them feedback on how to comment on each other's discussion posts. So um, helping them know like, you know, still speak basically the same way we would speak in class. So a little bit of digital citizenship here, uh, complete sentences, giving them some guidelines of, you know, uh, complimenting or adding something to the conversation, asking questions, um, making sure you proofread, 
And then this is something I have experienced a lot. Kids often want to only comment on the first one or two posts they see. And so you end up having a couple people with all the comments and a bunch of people at the bottom with none. So I have this kind of rule of if you see three comments, go on to the next person and, and wait until everybody has at least three comments. So that way everybody's getting to respond and then get multiple responses to their comment. Okay. You can specify, moving on to the nuts and bolts of this, you can specify if you want this to be for just a certain period or you want the entire class. Um, you could, so you probably want to select allow threaded replies. So this means that they can, you know, reply to each other. Um, I recommend using, checking this box. Users must post before seeing replies. Uh, this helps minimize the parrot effect of kids just copying what other kids have said already and really adds more to the conversation. So they have to post before they can see anybody else's posts. Um, I wouldn't bother checking the podcast feed. This basically allows them, and you could include student replies, they can actually download the responses through an RSS feeder feed. I would just ignore that. Um, chances are you probably want to make it a graded discussion. So this means that it would show up in the grade book. It would show up on their to-do list. You would need to then give them, you know, points and tell them in what category this is going to be in and all the things you would normally do. Um, if it's not graded, but you want students to see it, you should do the add to student to do. This shows up on their to-do list when they log into Canvas. But again, I recommend doing the graded one because uh, you, you probably want to have some points associated with this so that they do it. Be careful not to uh, select the group discussion. If you select this, and this is another podcast of how to do groups, um, this would mean that the discussion can only be between students within a single group. So maybe you have a group project of four or five kids and you want that group to have a discussion between the four or five of them. So most of the time, you're probably not going to select that. Um, again, you'd have the points and then you'd want to assign to who is going to get it and uh, the due date. And then if you want to close when that discussion can no longer be viewed, then you would uh, set the until date, in which case students can no longer uh, comment on it. So those are the basics of how to do your discussion. Once you're done, you would hit save and publish. And once students have uh, commented on the discussion, you'll be able to come here and go to speed grader and you'll be able to see that student's comment, what they wrote, and you'll also be able to see each of their uh, responses to other comments. So you can do um, grades here, you can add comments, uh, and, and that's what would go into, into the gradebook. Now going back to the discussion itself, you can come here and then be able to not only see any, if you used ARC, any of the comments for the ARC video, but you can then go down and respond. And, and for you or other students, if somebody wants to reply to, to this prompt, they would just click on uh, reply and they would start typing. Now, typically Canvas discussions are written discussions, but I have done this where they can actually do a video discussion. So they can actually answer the prompt using a video. So they can actually, um, instead of inserting a video, they can actually um, record a video. And so here I am in my little room recording. So here you could actually have them respond uh, within the Canvas discussion using their built-in camera. So lots of different options for doing the Canvas discussion, but the idea here is to be getting your students to discuss a topic you want to have them discuss in a digital space and then be able to blend that in with what you're doing in, in the classroom. So I hope that gives you the overview you need to be able to start doing Canvas discussions on your own in your class. Thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.